Hello, I'm Christopher Mose. And I'm Sabine Schoenberg here with another edition of Smart, Healthy and Green News. Last month, I was at Cedia in Dallas, Texas, the big home automation show. One of the big announcements was that Alexa is now compatible with the Crestron system, which of course, Crestron is the home automation system here at the Greenwich House. Sounds like great news, but I am personally a bit nervous, and I wonder if you guys are ready for Alexa. It's a good question, because Crestron isn't the only company that's racing here. So Amazon, who operates Alexa with the Echo, has been rapidly moving with several companies to expand what they call as Amazon Alexa skills. Yes. And so some of the companies that are getting on board, we've got Honeywell, we've got Sylvania, we've got Philips, we've got they're all racing right now to bring voice automation to your home. But here's the other part of voice automation. For Alexa to learn its skills, her skills, of course, she needs to be always listening in. So are you ready to have your conversations overheard 24 hours, seven days a week? That's really the real question to ask yourself to answer if you are ready to have Alexa in your life. And we've already been exposed to some of this. So Apple has Siri, and as many people may be aware, there's a setting within Siri where you either have to activate the home button to get Siri, or you can have Siri listening in all the time, and all you have to do is say, hey Siri and she'll start responding to you and doing commands. Now, Apple is doing the same thing with their home kit as Amazon is doing with Alexa. Google is doing something similar, but it is an important question. Are we comfortable with this level of intimacy with our electronic devices? Exactly, and I think really you have to answer for yourself if that is for you. Personally, I'm a little hesitant. I like my little private sphere, and yes, it's great to have access, but does it have to all be home automation? Maybe when I come back at home, it doesn't have to be voice automated. And That's where I am. Maybe I'm gonna change, but I think we all have to answer that question for and ourselves. And on the contrary of that, I'm quite comfortable with that. And yeah. I'm very eager for some of these to come into play. Now, I am concerned about, you know, can Siri turn off my security system, unlock my doors, things like that. So for personally, I probably wouldn't use it for those types of things, but for activities around like, turning up the volume of the music, adjusting the temperature. You're lazy. You don't want I to get know. up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it'll be interesting to see how this Jetson world comes about. Exactly. Next up, we found this interesting, um, this company out of Europe, again, um, the Netherlands, is, has been developing over the last several years a recycled plastic roadway. Now, we talked about roadways that are solar powered a while back. And we talked about recycling of plastic to build homes down in South America. Exactly. So here's another innovation. And what we thought was kind of interesting was how might this play into the residential space, particularly driveways and landscaping hardscapes? Well, what's cool about it, it's not just a road surfacing material, but the way the company has designed it, it's actually a channel format so that you have basically room for all kinds of sleeves to go under your driveway. They even talk about drainage being a part of management underneath this initial driveway surface. We'll see how it all plays out. The important thing is it's the Netherlands again, and it's gonna go into test phase in Rotterdam. So more reason to go to the Netherlands. Finally, wind power. We noticed, um, we did a feature on a passive house in San Diego recently, and the house was, it had incorporated wind power into this. Now we see solar a lot in passive houses. But wind power is now starting to become more popular. And I think one of the reasons is that the style of the turbine is becoming much more elegant for the residential application. Yeah, so we are all familiar with these huge, big windmills. I mean, you're talking about acres and even for houses, it's still a very large structure. And they are very noisy. As somebody who grew up in Northern Germany and we had them have them still all along the coastline, it is noisy. So that's a big problem. The other problem, of course, is with birds. Migratory birds get sucked into these wind turbines and it's not pretty. 
Um, so having a more enclosed kind of wind turbine structure, much more compacted, might really be an interesting answer for all of those issues. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our recent project, The Greenwich House. You can find more information on what we talked about today at sabinesnewhouse.com.